Hello and good day to everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the classification of seismic migration as well as seismic imaging. So before starting the video, so we just get to keep in mind. So there are two learning outcomes for this uh, video lecture. So in end of this video lectures, you will be able to analyze the classification of seismic migration as a whole and also you will be uh, able to evaluate the necessity of seismic migration and what are the stages stages to apply the seismic migration or the type of migration so uh, we will talk about the domains initially of the seismic imaging and migration so there are actually four domains of seismic migration so the first one if we are talking about the theory so in in a theory way we have two type of theories which is following the wave theory and the second one is our ray theory so we will also discuss based on this classification how many type of migration algorithms are exist uh, in the in the geophysics and the second thing is uh, uh, when we are looking for the subspace geology so there are two cases one is isotropic and another is anisotropic also we can add some more complex geometry such as uh, uh, elasticity or the absorption which is actually we are involving here with q but uh, in general, we have to either the subsurface geology is your isotropic or anisotropic. So if we are looking at the wave properties, how many type of properties of the waves you're looking, either you're looking only P, P waves and densities, then we, go, we can go for acoustic wave or either if you're looking P, 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 S and density, then you can go for elastic and inelastic is actually P, uh, v VPVS and density plus your absorption coefficient which is called Q. So that is, uh, I mean, when you are uh, interested to look at the properties of the waves and the last but not least the dimension. So either uh, your seismic can be two dimensional, three dimensional or four dimensional. So normally what we do in the previous time or even right now if we are doing a small survey for different objective we just go for 2d for oil and gas exploration mostly uh, surveys are doing in 3d and the 4d is actually when you are doing the uh, eor eor or the reservoir studies then you can go for 4d survey so actually 4d is uh, is a is a type of same 3d so we follow the 3d at different times to perform the 4D survey. So, so now we will look at the advanced classification of seismic migration. So as I mentioned, there are two wave theories, which is wave field extrapolation. And the second one is integral solution. So these are two main classification of seismic migration. So now we'll look at the wave extrapolation more into detail. So in this we have two further classification of wave field extrapolation. So in this actually we have uh, one is wave one wave wave equation and the second one is two wave wave equation. Further if we look at the integral solution so in integral solution normally we follow the Krikov migration or Gaussian gas gas bean or Gaussian bean migration. So that are two for integral solution. But in wave field extrapolation, we have further classification of one way and two way wave equation. So, looking at the one way wave equation, so we have the four year migration, phase shift migration, phase shift plus interpolation migration, split, split, st split step migration, and phase screen migration. And if we look at the two way wave equation, so in here we have reverse time migration which is called rtm and the full wave farm migration fwi so which which are the most popular uh, or the new technique in the in the geophysics industry to have the accurate subsurface image obviously when we go for i mean 
the advanced migration you have the complexity and you need high computational power and obviously it is more expensive I, we are going to discuss uh, this thing in 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 some lecture as well so now if we compare this two method which is the integral solution and the wave field extrapolation which is also called also called the continuation method so uh, in obviously both have some pros and cons so i have some strength and weaknesses so if we look at the integral method so uh, in integral we have the krikov and gaussian beam migration actually are the best known in this method so it is actually distinguishing the feature is separation of calculation of the travel time from imaging and it is actually a subset of image can be computed without needing to image to entire volume so either you can want to have a small or one section you can go for that and there is some strength of this migration so the deliver subset of the image volume including the offset uh, and it's also cost effective and interactive model building so in, in this you can use uh, velocity analysis interactive velocity analysis and it's also give the good dip response let's say if you have 90 degree even um, dipping reflector or 80 degree up to 90 degree it can give the better response is based on your acquisition parameters as as well as the velocity model so there are also some weakness of the integral method so in in this you have inherently kinematic actually and usually only deliver uh, one arrival path it's not following the two wave so actually it's one way and the velocity field are coarsely sampled for travel time computation and then the arrival time interpolated back to the seismic spacing so that is actually the weakness of integral method if you look at the wave field extrapolation so uh, it actually include the finite difference wave field continuation and also the phase shift correction so each depth slice of the image is computed from the previously computed slice so i mean you have to do the parallel migration for all all uh, sections and dip response is dependent on the order of expansion use uh, thus it's costly because it's is depend on the order of expansion so there are some strength of this method so it's actually image all arrivals like you have the uh, uh, i mean you have the first arrival then you have the multiples you have diffraction so it's image all arrivals and more accurate amplitude treatment so the amplitude uh, preservation is very accurate because it's including the diffraction multiple so that is actually the key of uh, absorbing the amplitude recovery uh, there are some weaknesses um, the costly is not actually a weakness but it's actually the demand of the industry obviously when you're using high computational power and a lot of efforts then obviously it becomes the cost effective and it's obtaining a good dip response need higher computational power it's obvious thing because uh, we are using two-way wave field does not uh, readily produce pre stack data and difficult to achieve the cost effective uh, interactive model building without restrictive assumption such as mono azimuth for a mono azimuth is quite difficult to get the uh, subsurface velocity model so now uh, we look at the complexity comparison so let's say if we start from here so the complexity is less than going forward this side to the down is complexity is increasing so initially the pre-stack post-stack time migration or the pre-stack time migration which is creek off um, creek off so that was the initial uh, migration strategy so the complexity is very low and obviously the computational cost is also low then uh, the second migration which is fast beam migration is called gaussian beam or uh, another beam migration which is the a little bit complex than the creek of migration then moving forward is a creek of pre stack depth migration so it's the time migration then we have the depth migration 
then um, wave equation migration of full beam pre stack depth migration so in that actually it covers all the type of features in the subsurface then the lastly which is the rtm reverse time migration so that is actually more complex so if we're going like this one so its complexity is increasing and obviously the power computational power and everything is also increasing in this part so uh, there are some things to note down that last time we discussed that in in our domains and uh, um, domains of the seismic data so over there i mentioned that uh, normally the migration uh, is done in offset domain but just to note it down when we are using wave equation migration rtm or fwi so for that purpose actually we need the short domain either it's 2d or 3d so we have to use the data which is in short domain but when we are doing the crick off migration or the beam migration so that is um, for that purpose, we use common offset domain. So that is the additional thing which was contradicting from the previous lecture. So I have this mentioned here. So now we, if you look at the one way uh, FK reverse time migration, which is um, three type of migration I'm going to discuss. So first one is the Gazdag migration. It is a unary operator for depth variable velocity so in this we lose the dip component of the image because it's a one way so the two way obviously it's image all the component of the dipping reflectors so and also it is a least scare method uh, a least scare method is used to recover this high dip component so the expression of gustak migration is this one the final uh, equation then the second migration is a phase shift migration is purely based on the reverse time modeling so in rtm uh, concept was actually it's a two way but this uh, phase shift is a reverse time modeling so the constant velocity concept was removed which was imposed by stored and who was the person who uh, actually uh, represent this uh, stored migration and Johnny gazdag uh, shortly after the uh, stalled migration. Then lastly, uh, we have the third type of migration, which is stalled constant velocity migration. So in 1978, the stalled is scientist, based on his um, 2D FK migration, he proposed this stalled constant velocity migration. So that concept was actually removed after, after this one stalled. So then lastly, we have the phase shift migration. So, but uh, obviously when we are using the constant velocity, the uh, migration data exactly up to 90 degree. If we have the constant velocity, then high speed of migration and low computation power because of the uh, constant velocity. So that was all about uh, the, uh, the lecture. Thank you so much.